So we talked about this passive attack. And uh, I want to use the same platform, but upgrade it a little bit to be like, all right, what if you are a more advanced user and you're just like, oh, this is baby stuff. I know I can create a fake access point. I want to get to more active attacks where I'm actually able to like shepherd people from a trusted access point over to a fake access point and do some other really advanced things. So I had the pleasure of working with a creator named Spacetune, aka Stefan, who created the ESP8266 D author. Now you'll typically see this in like its wristwatch uh, implementation and we actually support it on our uh, Wi-Fi nugget. In fact, I have one in front of me that has been flashed with this right now. And it's really cute to be able to use the screen and buttons to be able to select access points and either attack them or clone them or do some other basic Wi-Fi attacks using just a button and screens. And in fact, that's the basis of our Wi-Fi nugget is to be able to do most of that just using a button and screen. But what if you want to move beyond that and you're just like, okay, I, you know, I know that I can clone a Wi-Fi network. I know I can kick devices off, but like, can I do more interesting things? Can I do like Wi-Fi research with this thing? The same way that I might want to do with a wireless network adapter. And the answer is yes, absolutely. When I was working with Stefan, I made a specific request that I really wanted to be able to do some cool like phishing things. And even though it was awesome that the original Wi-Fi D author has a web access point that you can connect to that gives you a menu to be able to do all this interesting stuff on any device with Wi-Fi. So you can connect with your phone to this little ESP8266 and do some more advanced attacks. Uh, if you get rid of that kind of like friendly, beginner friendly, like helpful Wi-Fi interface and instead have it available as a phishing interface or as an attack interface, suddenly you can do much more advanced things than the original version of the Wi-Fi D author allows for. So the V3 or version three of the ESP8266 D author, I think is one of the best Wi-Fi hacking tools that people don't know about. I had the pleasure of working on this project and trying to make it as mean and as interesting as possible based on research that I was actively doing. This has some features packed into it that you cannot do in the original version of the Wi-Fi D author. To get here, it's kind of sneaky. There is a, a drop down menu on the GitHub for the Wi-Fi D author and the V2 is the default version of this. And this is the one that most people know, you know, it's, it's maintained, but you can see there is a difference here in the two versions. In the version two, you have a web interface, display support, serial command line, that's great. A scanner, D auth attack, beacon attack and probe attack. That's great. Like all those things are very wonderful. But the V3 has these additional features. It can also do support for a serial command line interface, signal strength scanner. So you can use this as a fox hunting tool. So let's say that you detect somebody on your network that's not supposed to be here. You could use this tool to hunt down exactly who is connecting to your network without authorization. So if that's one of your neighbors, for example, you could use this tool to hunt down exactly who is behind that intrusion into your network. Or if you're at like an area Airbnb and you're scanning and you're like, huh, that's an unusual device. Like, I don't remember that being connected to this network or like, you know, maybe that manufacturer is a little suspicious. Maybe it's a camera. You would be able to track down every device that's connected to the main access point by proximity and signal strength. So this has real value as a fox hunting tool. And for, again, $1.80, it gives you the ability to find the location or localize the location of basically any access point or any client of any access point around you. And that I think is super cool because it means that there's no more mystery as to the location of one of these Wi-Fi devices, you can walk around until the signal strength spikes up and gets really, really strong and know, okay, I found approximately where this thing is. There's also an authentication scanner. This means that you can get different Wi-Fi devices to give up the secret of where they've been in the past. And this is research I worked on with a technique called a beacon swarm. In the previous version of the Wi-Fi D author, you were able to create fake Wi-Fi networks or the appearance of fake Wi-Fi networks by sending out beacon frames. Beacon frames are basically a giant billboard that says, hi, I'm this Wi-Fi network. This is my name. I am on this channel and I support these various speeds. And that is why your phone, when you're in a new place, is able to tell you what Wi-Fi networks are around you. Any device that's Wi-Fi capable can put out beacon frames and they don't need to be truthful. There's no validation. There's nothing to prove that it's actually a real Wi-Fi network. The previous version of the Wi-Fi D author was able to create up to a hundred fake networks. And originally they were a Rickroll. So Stefan had programmed it to be like, never going to give you up, never going to Let you down. 
And I thought that was really funny, but I was like, hmm, what if instead I programmed in 100 of the most common open Wi-Fi networks in an area? So that's gonna be like Starbucks Wi-Fi, any like major chains, McDonald's Wi-Fi. First I wore drove around the Los Angeles area. I got like tens of thousands of Wi-Fi networks. And then I went through that list and I found the most common open Wi-Fi networks and made a list of those and started broadcasting them. And what I found is that nearby devices that had been connected to those open networks before would attempt spontaneously to connect to them. Now this serves two important purposes. It allows me to identify where they've been in the past. Each user's experience is like a fingerprint. So if you've been to like McDonald's and then like, you know, KFC and then Motel 6 and then a couple other ones, that's probably going to be unique to your device. And I can use that to build a fingerprint and de-anonymize devices around me by being able to track them by which open networks they've connected to in the past. So if I find five open networks that you've connected to in the past, I can build a profile where if I ping out those five fake networks and your device responds to all of them, I know pretty assuredly that that's you. Even though your device might be doing things like MAC address randomization and trying to hide, I can continue to track you by putting out all these fake Wi-Fi networks and paying very careful attention to which networks your individual device responds to. That also means if there's any sensitive places you've been to. Let's say you're a, an employee at a defense contractor. Let's say you've been to a strip club and you're not supposed to. If you've connected to the Wi-Fi there and somebody starts broadcasting a fake version, your phone is going to sell you out. And the only way to prevent that is to go into your phone and delete those stored networks that are in there. I'm not sure about the defense contractor and then a strip club. I don't know what those are going to do with each other, but I'll take your word for it, Cody. <laughs>